Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people on the internet for your Thursday, July the 13th. Starting off with news from the Arizona Coyotes, so I figured I'd wear the Roadrunners jersey here. Uh, the AHL affiliate, which may very well have been where Galchenyuk was going to play this season, we may never know. Uh, so he was signed by the Coyotes, wasn't it on the 1st of July? At any rate, we are now on the 13th of July, and the relationship between team and player has soured to the point where the team has placed him on waivers. Uh, Galchenyuk's contract will be terminated. Now, the NHLPA is looking at this to make sure there's nothing untoward going on. Uh, but the Coyotes basically said, yeah, they're putting him on, on waivers for termination, and they're not going to have any further comment, which means there's definitely something else there. Now, if you're going to terminate a player's contract, that's a little different than a buyout. So a buyout, of course, the player gets paid. They become a free agent and they can sign somewhere else. The player's contract is terminated. They don't get paid. It's the same as getting fired from your job. And I guess I guess I could say with or without severance, either way. So basically, a buyout, you get paid. Termination, you don't. And this is contract termination, meaning before he's even made a cent from the uh, Arizona Coyotes, they're saying, nope. And so it could be, it's got to be breach of contract. No idea what it is. Uh, but this is going to be interesting because with Galchenyuk, uh, he has bounced around the league. He's been through, I think, it's seven different teams. Uh, does this signal then that that would be his, his final chance? We'll see. Uh, it does feel like NHL players get a lot of chances, of course, to prove themselves, especially if they're former first-rounders, which Galchenyuk is. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and if the NHLPA does get involved. I'm not thinking they will. Uh, because again, before the Coyotes put him on waivers to terminate the contract, I would think they go, yep, this is a, an ironclad reason to, to take out that contract. So we'll see. And But let the speculation reign as I've already seen. I've already seen the speculation. But remember, uh, the big difference between buyout and termination, buyout, you get paid by the team when they buy out your contract. When you're terminated, they don't. They don't pay you. You don't get paid. Uh, so some signing news from around the NHL as well. Uh, Leo Carlson signed his entry-level contract with the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, the question of whether he'd be best suited playing in the AHL, the NHL, or the SHL is out there. I think if he is, if he comes into camp and if he looks like he can be as good as, say, a third-line center, then you let him play. You let him play, you keep him in the NHL. If he's not quite at that level, then I think you probably leave it up to the player. Would he feel better being in the SHL or the AHL? I'm guessing SHL just because that'd be home for him, but he may very well qualify for the team in training camp, and it might not be a, anything to talk about. Uh, Carlson is a star player uh, in the making, and uh, yeah, we'll see how things go for him with the Ducks this season if, in fact, he makes the team. Uh, Jesper Boquist has signed a contract with the Boston Bruins. It's one year, 775000 so league minimum for Boquist. Uh, just a depth player. I did talk about Boston's forward depth yesterday, of course, before that signing took place. Uh, they've lost some depth in the offseason with the potential loss of Bergeron. Uh, Krejci, it does not appear, will come back. And, of course, they traded out Hall. They traded out Felino. So their forward group is a little bit depleted. They definitely need to beef it up a little bit. Uh, Boquist is a pure bottom six forward, but he can help. So... Uh, he's played, I believe, his whole career in New Jersey, and now he moves on to Boston. Uh, Ty DeLandry has signed an extension with the Dallas Stars. It's one year. It's $900,000. I like DeLandria. I know there's people who don't. Uh, I know there's people who don't like some of uh, the things he does on the ice, and I, I get it. Uh, but DeLandria, when he's keeping his game clean, I think he's a solid third-line option. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the offense ever creeps up a little bit with him or, or you know, if he's kind of plateaued there. But at any rate... Delandria, solid depth option, $900,000. No risk to that, to that contract. The Montreal Canadiens getting some bookkeeping done, signing two-way deals to two players. Uh, Bowden and Condotta have signed one-year extensions. Condotta got a goal in the one game he played this past season. Bowden is a, a defenseman that's uh, kind of fallen off a bit, but hey, you know, he's still making his living. And again, a two-way contract means you get paid one level in the NHL. In most cases, it's seven hundred seventy-five thousand in the NHL. It might be eight hundred thousand, and then in the AHL, think about half of that or below. That's usually how that works. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always, as we get into the speculation on what happened with Galchenyuk, of course. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support, I will talk to you again soon.